And good morning, fellow ticket holders from a rainy Monday here in Japan, in Kawaguchiko. We are making our way towards the train station early this morning to catch a train to Atsuki again, and then from Atsuki to Shinjuku in Tokyo. It is supposed to be raining for the next two days. Luckily, Disney is the two days following that, and it's supposed to be a beautiful day. The last time I looked, uh, 75 degrees and sunny, partly cloudy. But we have two days in Tokyo to see the touristy things, and it's supposed to be raining just like this. So we will see what we can make the, make the most of and see what we can do today and tomorrow. Now, while we make this walk, I do want to point out one thing. If you've noticed as we walk on these streets, they really do not have sidewalks here. We're just walking on top of the drain covers. It does make things a little difficult when walking regularly, let alone in the rain. So something to be warned when commuting back and forth from places like to your Airbnb or to the train station, uh, you will be walking literally on the side of the road. But there are some situations where there are a few sidewalks, which makes things a little bit easier. But eight times out of 10, they're usually just walking on the storm drains or literally on the white line on the side of the road. And people have enough respect to not hurt you. But before we make it to the train station, we have made our first stop location here at the Fujisan Lawson's. We're gonna grab some breakfast and then go to the train station to catch our train. All right, breakfast and Lawson's has been acquired. So let us continue on right down here to the train station to catch our train this morning. And here we are at a quiet, peaceful train station. And uh, now we gotta find somewhere dry, I guess over here in these benches to eat our breakfast because the gift shop area does not look to be open where they have seats for the cafe. But much nicer to see this train station basically dead before all the tourists come through with the buses. Okay, I was wrong. The door is open, so we came inside. And so we're just gonna sit over here in this little cubby hole where it's nice and dry to eat our breakfast. We have about 20 minutes, 30 minutes to eat our breakfast. And here is our breakfast hall this morning. So we both got some ice cafe lattes from Starbucks. We finally got to go and try one of these fruit sandwiches. It has whipped cream and fruit in the center. We got some fruit cups, an eggy egg for Vanessa, and I got an egg sandwich. And Vanessa finally is gonna have a NATO sushi roll here. Those are like fermented soybeans. It looks like we'll be taking the Thomas train up to Atsuki this morning. Same one we rode yesterday from Fujiku Highland. And yesterday there was a lot of people. So look how cute this train is with all the Thomas the Tank Engine engines on it. And opposite of the Thomas train, they have a Narito train. Really cute. All right, let's go in and get ourselves a seat. made it back to Atsuki station we will transfer here to Shinjuku finally made it back to Tokyo City more specifically the Shinjuku area I feel so accomplished being able to start here go all the way down to Fukuoka and make our way all the way back with very little difficulty and again it's gonna be raining for the next two days so we're gonna make the most of what we can I think we're gonna go over to the cat shrine it's a little bit of ways about a 15 minute train ride and check that out and then we're gonna go to the Jubilee Puff cream factory and get a Totoro cream puff and then go from there. So let's go catch a couple more trains. So a quick change of plans. 
because we're running a little late due to trying to figure out the Tokyo subway system, we decided we were going to head towards the Totoro Cream Puffs first. And we are walking outside the station here. And apparently there's a spa right here. Everything looks very tranquil, especially in the train. So we have successfully made it through the line and we got the goods right here but on top they give you this little Totoro sticker and here is the box of the three cream puffs now what is really cool is they give you a dry ice packet in the event you were going farther than we did but we got three different flavors this one should be just the normal custard this one should be the seasonal which is chestnut and this one here should be the special flavor which is raspberry cream so it looks like the first one that we bit into, and I think I got the order wrong, is just the vanilla cream. And look how full it is inside that puff pastry. And here's the inside of the chestnut. You can see the little brown pieces in there is the chestnut itself. And finally the raspberry. So apparently it's chocolate raspberry, even though they said it was raspberry and cream. It's chocolate cream. station where we'll transfer to another train to go see more of these cat statues. So it looks like we might be just out in the middle of nowhere but we are headed somewhere specific and some type of artist told us that this is the direction for the cats so we will continue up the side street here to the cat temple. And here we are we are at the Kotoguji temple that's the official name of it. And this is where they have stuff for cats. Let's go in and check it out. According to legend, a feudal lord passing by the temple was beckoned by a cat, which led him to take shelter just before a thunderstorm. Grateful for the cat's actions, the lord became a benefactor of the temple. And the Maneki Neko has since become a symbol of good luck. The temple is renowned for its association with the Maneki Neko, or Beckoning Cat, a popular Japanese figurine believed to bring good luck and fortune. Gotokuji Temple features a large number of these cat figurines. Adorning the temple grounds, they attract visitors who come to pray for good fortune. Gotokuji Temple is a historic Buddhist temple with a serene and picturesque setting. brought us to Ikebukuru and we're gonna have lunch right here in front of us. This is a beef katsu place. 
go in and give it a try. Our entrees have been ordered, but first up is our drink, the iced oolong tea. With very little weight, here is our entree. A nice steak filet with some shredded cabbage and Japanese potato salad, and as a set with miso soup and rice. But the funny unique part about this restaurant is you cook the meat yourself, right on top of these little stone grills. So we have finished dinner and are now in Asakusa. Let's go check out our Airbnb. All right, we have finally made it to our Airbnb for the first two nights in Tokyo. I'm gonna just make this real quick. Um, it's also really tiny. So we are in Asakusa, which is basically the older section of town. And um, the view that we have is kind of cool, kind of unique. Um, we found this again, this unit is on Airbnb. If you're interested in it, I'll put it down in the description below. But let's check out our small little Airbnb that we have here today. All right, I'm gonna start right here at the door and I had to put this out into wide angle so I could show basically the whole room here. So if we start here on the left, this would be the shower room. A little bit larger than what we had over in Kawaguchiko, but very similar as well. And if we turn opposite of that to the right, looks like we have a closet here. That's actually a pretty large closet for this space. Could almost be another little bedroom in there. Uh, some hangers, a hanging pole, and that looks to be extra bedding for the unit itself. So not for us, but definitely a lot of room in the closet. If we turn back left here, we have some light switches and the exhaust fan for the shower. We also have the air conditioning and heating remote and instructions here in English, which that's appreciative. And we have a little chair right here and pardon our stuff here, it's not a large room. And if we turn back to the right here, uh, we have a little vanity. It looks like they provide some cups, some hand soap, some toothpaste, no toothbrushes, but that's fine, we have our own. And we also have a hair dryer and not sure what's in this. Oh, I'm not sure why I was just scared to open it. I didn't know what this little window meant. Looks like this is the water closet. This is where the toilet is. Went ahead and turned the light on there for us. So again, Japanese toilet. This one, just like in Kawaguchiko, we have a sink over top. Kind of wash your hands while the water goes down into the holding tank. Got the controls for the bidet. And we turn to the right. It actually comes with a washing machine. It does not have a dryer um, outside. They have a clothesline, which with it raining, it does us no good. But luckily we did all of our laundry yesterday in Kawaguchiko. Up top is where we have toilet paper and some laundry detergent. So they do provide that here. We have a full length mirror. And then over the toilet, we have more extra toilet paper, some sanitizer, some more laundry detergent and that looks to be tissues. This might be for the host to replenish here in the unit. So again, another pretty large room for a water closet. If we continue on around here, we have this, what well, looks to be a really comfortable chair. I'm not sure if it is. It's really nice and it looks like we have a desk here behind it. So it has a workspace with a power strip hanging here on the wall to plug items into the desk. And we got a box of tissues. Continuing past that cool green chair, we have a bunk bed. So technically it looks like we can fit three. Vanessa's already up there laying in the top bunk and above her is the air conditioning unit that that controller controls. And finally for the room, right around the corner here from the entryway and opposite of the bed, we have a small kitchenette with a hot plate and a sink. Looks like we got a hot water maker, some cups, utensils, bowls, um, pot, pan. Looks like we have some cleaning products down here. Again, probably not for us. Microwave, refrigerator with freezer and refrigerator. We have a vacuum cleaner and a trash can. Now this is what was really cool and unique. And the reason why we chose this is our view out onto the kind of a balcony, but kind of just an open window. So let me open the door and I'll show you. And that's what we got. I'm assuming that the park is about to close. And when I talk about park, we do have the small amusement park here outside of our window. Now this drop tower here does not run anymore. Unfortunately, it's an SNS drop tower. That would have been cool to see. 
We can see right over here, Senjoji Temple. And technically right here should be the Tokyo Tower, but it's so cloudy we cannot see it. But if we look down here, that is a coaster car. That is the country's oldest roller coaster. Um, and that is why we picked this. We hope tomorrow we'll be able to ride that so we can at least get the country's oldest roller coaster credit. And the name of the park is Osaksa Hananashiki. I still think I probably butchered that. But yeah, so this little park here is literally in the heart of Tokyo in the Asakusa area. Really cool. It does house the country's oldest roller coaster at 70 years old, which they are celebrating this year. So if the rain holds off a little bit, though it seems to be running in the rain, hopefully we get a little bit of time tomorrow, we will at least get that coaster credit, which is the reason why we are staying in this area. So that will conclude our room tour. We have a couple more things we need to do tonight. We're gonna go have some ramen at Ichiran Ramen, which the funny thing is, is it was established down in Fukuoka, which is where we started this whole journey. And it took us all the way up here to Tokyo to get it. But we are excited to have their famous tonkatsu ramen, which is pork broth ramen. Um, so yeah, we're gonna have that. Then we need to go to Don Quixote, the large department store and pick up some things and a large bag we need to have something to bring souvenirs home and we're gonna check it so a couple more things tonight before we close this vlog out all right change of plans uh looked it up at ichiran apparently it's temporarily closed so we are going to go to a tempura place so we're gonna go check that out and get some tempura vegetables and shrimp <laughs> Sensoji Temple is one of the city's oldest and most significant Buddhist temples. It is dedicated to the Bodhisattva Kanon, the goddess of mercy. The temple's origins date back to the 7th century, making it Tokyo's oldest temple. The iconic Kami Nariman Gate, with its massive red lantern, marks the entrance to Sensoji and is a popular landmark. Beyond the gate, visitors traverse Nakimisa Dori, a vibrant shopping street lined with traditional stalls selling a variety of goods, souvenirs, and local snacks. And here we are. We are going to stop here for dinner at Amaro. And it is a tempura place. Oh, it looks so good. Let's go inside and check it out. For dinner tonight, we picked up a tempura set. This comes with white rice and a variety of tempura things such as fried shrimp and vegetables, as well as some other type of fried item, we're not sure what it is right now, miso soup and pickled vegetables. That also comes with the traditional tempura dipping sauce and salt for seasoning. Speaking of that unknown item, it is a tempered soft boiled egg. Oh, it's so good. And for a quick dessert after dinner, we're gonna stop here at this taiyaki place and get one of the red bean paste pastries. And here it is right here, just like what we got in Washington DC at the Japanese Cultural Festival. Oh my goodness, this is so good. Just as good as what we had in Washington DC. Um, might be a little bit better. So the pastry itself is nice and crispy and then the beans inside are nice and soft. Oh, so good. So good. Glad I found a stall to get one. And here we are. We have made it to the Asakusa's Don Quixote. Not our first one we've been into. We stepped in and stepped right back out of the one in Osaka. But uh, we're gonna try to go in here and get a piece of luggage. Hopefully it's not as busy as Osaka. Uh, look at what is greeting us here at the entrance to this store. We got some eels, really large ones. This one's really neat with its spots. 
and hello, hello and welcome back to another sofa time debriefing <laughs> and this time we're going to be talking about our first day in Tokyo to actually explore and see it. <laughs> so this video started out with us leaving Kawaguchiko and we're going to start with talking about breakfast because we yeah. didn't get to talk about that. It was a very rainy day. Yeah, but we're going to go ahead and cover this as a generalization about going to convenience stores or convenience as they're known as in Japan and getting food and more specifically breakfast. Yes, so, unfortunately breakfast as we know it here in America is very scarce in Japan. Uh, everything opens up later. Yeah. Nothing's open except 7-Eleven, Family Mart, Lawson's. and Lawson's. Yeah. Um, and your only options for breakfast for the most part are grab-and-go items like we had, so cold sandwiches, fruits, um, hard-boiled eggs. Some bread, some pastries, yeah. coffee. They do have coffee, so but no, that's, that's good. Yeah, but no hot items like breakfast sandwiches and things that we're used to here. So that was something that we had to get used to. And basically the convenience store had to be our spot for breakfast a lot of times due to the fact that we were traversing the country so early in the morning. Um, but overall, for this specific breakfast, it was always nice to have fruit as an option. Yeah, it was so, so good. It was so sweet. Mm -hmm. And it even came with like a little pick. <laughs> so you didn't have to use your fingers. Yeah, to, and it had a, it was a little star shape. It was so cute. Uh, so you won't, yeah, to pick at the fruit. And another staple that we seem to have was um, egg salad sandwich, which yeah, egg salad good. from the store is really good. So good. <laughs> um, and then something new that we really wanted to try. Now the convenience store version was not what we really wanted. We wanted to find this at a true bakery, mm -hmm. but that was the fruit and cream sandwich. But, or also known as fruit sandos. <laughs> and they were okay. That, yeah. one, that one was okay. That one was okay. We had later determined it was a little older. Mm -hmm. So the fruit was really, it's starting to get right. really mushy, but the flavor was great. I'm excited to try a fresher one mm -hmm. and like one more locally established one. Yeah. And then finally you had these soybeans, yes, these fermented the soybeans. The NATO, I was, I'm still gonna tr try it one more time <laughs> somewhere in the end. I really wanted to really like this, but it was horrible. It was, cause I love sour things. I love the fermented pickles that they had on the, on some of the meals. The, they were more sour, but these were like, rancid <laughs> they were like like if it was expired yeah. and, and it is known as an acquired taste mm. it is something that people like to go try that's what they eat for breakfast <laughs> yeah. yeah usually on top of but rice not everybody likes it nope. but some do oh and i had an, a hard-boiled egg T totally different from a hard-boiled egg here in america and it was really good so again overall breakfast at a convenience store is convenient yeah. as in the name of the store but definitely not our first choice if need be to get breakfast. We prefer to go to an actual restaurant, yeah. but it was really good. Mm -hmm. So once we finally made it from Kawaguchiko to Tokyo, we made it to the area of Shinjuku. And as I mentioned in the video, it was definitely felt like an accomplishment to finally make it back to where we started. Um, but by being in Shinjuku, we have now made it to Shinjuku Station. And at this point, we had put our bags away in a coin locker and was ready to go for the day. Mm -hmm. And this is where we ran into a little bit of a problem. Yes, he had, he, had done, he had done really good in all the other stations, but Shinjuku is known as one of the busiest. Yeah, it's the And the second busiest. largest, next to Grand Central Terminal in New York City. Uh, huge it was a mess it was huge <laughs> yeah and from the information I found online about 4 million people go through this station every day so that makes it the busiest train station in the world and there are 12 train lines <laughs> that run through this so yeah. to find the right way to go was very difficult now where we put our bags happened to actually be at the bus station because when we left the train and made our way to the exit following what I had on Google Maps it actually brought us out at the bus station exit, which was a really peaceful spot to get yes, ourselves together. A, a quick note. So when you go to these stations, it's not just one central location. For an exit. For an exit. There are multiple buildings surrounding the <laughs> station and it's still part of the yeah. station. So we ended up researching and it ended up being across the street. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I was trying to look at signs, I was looking at maps, and I almost at the point I was giving up. And I'm like, I don't know where to go. 
Um, we knew that it had the sign over top that said, this is the train station, so we decided to go in. I told Vanessa what we were trying to look for, and she's like, is that it there? And it was a little bit of signage that said that was the line to go that way, so we eventually made it. We, we went to go check it out, and it ended up being yeah. correct. I'm like, oh. Uh. And so just as I mentioned in the video, this put us behind schedule to get to the Cat t Temple first, and then go back to the puff pastries because we wanted to make sure to get to the puff pastry shop as soon as possible because like everything else in Very Japan, anything spot. that's popular, it's going to have a line, let alone sell out. Yep. So because we knew about the timing, we decided to head there next. So that'll be our next thing to talk about, the puff pastry shop. So the shop's name is Shirohige and it was so adorable. We now, had to wait in line. Yeah. yeah. So the, the, the shop itself apparently is owned by family members mm -hmm. of Miyazaki, yeah. which Miyazaki is the author of all the Miyazaki, Miyazaki yes. films of Studio Ghibli. Studio Ghibli, yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, and that's why it had the Studio Ghibli um, theming to it. Mm -hmm. So I don't remember how long we waited, I think about 30, 40 minutes, yeah. um, and was able to get the three pastries. Um, you enjoyed the theming. Yeah, the, oh gosh, of course, yes. And, and I'm sure you did too. You've seen the movies. The theming was absolutely adorable. It was like galore of Totoro, all the like little Kiki's, Kiki's delivery service, little figurines, yeah. uh, uh, original artwork mm -hmm. signed by him. Yeah, that was really neat to Amazing see. Amazing to see that. It was uh, adorable. It's also located on the first floor of a, of a building that has a restaurant on top that does sell the puffs as well. If yeah, you ever, so there's a cafe. A cafe. And there's actually two lines outside depending on what you want to do. So if you want to do the cafe, you stick to the right hand side. If you want to just go in and get the puff pastries from the bakery, you go to the left. Yep. And that gets confusing yeah, to some people as was, you show it's up. It's also really small. <laughs> yeah, and they all use the one entrance, so yeah. it kind of gets confusing. Yeah. Um, but. Uh, it w but it, it moved pretty yeah. pretty quick. They and they prefer, I believe it may have been cash only. Yep. Um, I don't remember. Don't quote me on that, but yeah. for the most part, they were they were basically flipping the people through real quick. Yeah. So um, these puffs are really, 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 really popular yeah. online. Just uh, for the view, the just, the look of them, because yeah, they're really they, cute, they looking look like, like the Totoro. Totoro. It's a Totoro shaped puff pastry, and inside it's filled with cream. Yeah. That's all. And I believe that there is three or four year-round flavors and they always rotate through each season one seasonal flavor yeah. and this season for the fall was the chestnut yeah so i guess that'll bring us to actually what we thought of the pastries yes. they were a little they were let underwhelming they were yeah. such a letdown <laughs> for me the puff pastry part at least yeah. for the most part the puff pastry was just basic puff pastry but it wasn't even it, it wasn't even flaky fresh. and fluffy Fluffy. it did like feel that. like it had been sitting in the refrigerator, so I don't know how long ago they were made. I assume that they were made day of, but obviously we can't confirm that. Um, and maybe that's just the way that they like their pastry yeah, at their the shop. Yeah, their pastry, yeah. I don't but know. the cream on the inside oh, was super was good so of good. all three flavors. Yes. So the chestnut flavor, the vanilla, the and the chocolate raspberry. They weren't overly sweet, so they were just soft and yeah. really good. Good so, flavor. Yeah. So a plus and a thumbs up for the cream, and but the, fell and, flat with the pastry. And for the and how cute they looked. Yeah. <laughs> but the puff pastry was a letdown. So yeah, that was... So our but, but, but I'm still glad I got to check it out. Yeah, so our recommendation is, is if it's something you really want, I guess go get it. Definitely. But it's definitely not something that I would go quickly yeah, run back. Yeah, definitely for. try it for yourself because we all have different palettes. Yeah. <laughs> so after we were done at the puff pastry bakery, we made our way finally to the cat temple, which its official name is Gotokuji Temple. So it was definitely interesting to get there. Mm -hmm. As you saw, somebody showed the pointing of the way through basically residential area to yeah. get to this temple um, but it's definitely a gorgeous place oh my once you get there and to have the rain coming down at the time the whole area just felt so peaceful and so serene um, nicely manicured and everything yeah it was it was adorable I have known of Gotokuji temple since my anime days in college and I had known I had always always wanted to go here so to see it in person was just Awesome. It it's was awesome. definitely an iconic thing that you see yes. around with all the, the little, statues yes. of the cats. Everyone um, has seen the little lucky cat, I'm yeah. sure. <laughs> and it was just beautiful. Mm -hmm. And we were so bummed out that the, it was sold out. Yeah, so you can purchase the different size yeah 
cats yep. um, from the shop, and there was a sign right out front that said all sold out yeah. of all sizes. All sizes, because um, there were big ones for like $40, and then the little teeny tiny, <laughs> tiny ones that we wanted for Pongo and for Rini. my Rini. And, uh, um, hopefully we get to go back next time eventually and get those to put them there Yeah, so it was also interesting when I was doing the research to do the voiceover about the temple that the legend being that the The person was walking past the temple and was beckoned in by a cat Before the thunderstorm came to basically keep him safe from it So for us to be there in the rain was yeah. really uh, a neat Coincidence. Yeah, coincidence, <laughs> for sure. So after we were done there, we got back on the little train, got back to the main train line, and worked our way towards North Tokyo to Ikebukuru so that we could finally have lunch. And that was when we had the Gayu Katsu, mm -hmm. which is basically steak katsu. Mm -hmm. And this was definitely something that was on our bucket list, yeah. a type of restaurant to visit yes, when we were in Japan. there's tons of these all over Japan. And I'm glad that we <laughs> found this little, um, basically local one. So that's where we kind of had to wait a little bit in the stairwell because it only held about maybe 15, 20 people, but they turned people and turned the food through so fast that it wasn't that much. I think about 10, 15 minute wait. Yeah. Um, they also give you the menu ahead of time so you know what to get. But there's only really one thing, which is the, the steak katsu, and it just comes in different sizes. So you different get one sizes. filet, one and a half filet, two filets. Yeah. Um, with the set, just sit by itself. Mm -hmm. But the fun part is, is just being able to cook it yourself on the stone grill. Yeah. Really fun, really it cool. It's a little stone grill. Definitely one of our favorite meals while yeah. we were in Tokyo. For sure, what an experience. Yeah. <laughs> so after we were done lunch, we actually were re getting really tired and it was time for us to check into our Airbnb. So we made our way to Asakusa, the area of Japan that we were going to be at for the evening and checked into our Airbnb. So let's go over our Airbnb real quick. Um, as you saw, the main point of us staying there was the fact that it overlooked the amusement park, which being coaster enthusiasts and being amusement park enthusiasts, this was a real big highlight for us, especially to be looking out at the coaster, which is the country's oldest roller coaster. Yeah, that was really cool. cool. Yeah. Um, but for the Airbnb itself, it does, it, it is situated on the fourth floor of the building. There is no elevator, it is a tight, circular staircase oh upstairs yes. so it was not would not be ideal if you're trying to carry big suitcases yeah. it was hard enough with our yes. backpacks oh my gosh and That's even amazing. without any bags going up and down the stairs yeah, multiple so, so, times it was so steep too yeah so definitely that's a negative to it the space itself was really small we definitely not want to go with more than two people yeah, perfect for two people yeah. absolutely um, the shower again was basically a good highlight, nice and hot, nice pressure. But another negative for me was the bed due to the fact that the mattress was super thin. I tried flipping it in half, making it, trying to make it twice as thick. I ended up basically rolling myself up in the comforter like a burrito to give myself <laughs> some padding. But uh, my, Overall, it helped that I was tired to basically go to sleep. Mine was a little better. It was like memory foam, but thin memory foam. So mine on top was a little better. So I, yeah, but yeah, those beds were hard. But overall, the location was perfect for where we needed to be. One of the, the warnings and negatives that some people have is the fact that it is right next to the amusement park. So when it is operating during the day, they said it can be loud. Mm -hmm. We never experienced no. that. Mm -hmm. We weren't really there during the day though. Yeah. But again, for us being amusement park enthusiasts, we, it wasn't really a big sounds. problem yeah. to us. But the, again, the biggest positive was the amazing views that we had of the theme park, of the, um, Senjoji Temple and the you could technically see Tokyo Sky Tree um, and I do have a shot that I can put in from the next day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but really cool, really good spot very, to very stay good. And speaking of Senjoji Temple, we went through there next on our way to dinner mm -hmm. and I am glad that we actually changed yes. where we were going to eat because yeah. we wouldn't have walked through there if we were going to go to get the Ichiran Ramen. So as we were walking through at night, we made the we have determined that that is the best time to visit. Yeah, because the next day we went through during the day and it was super packed. Super packed. <laughs> so the temple itself is closed, but the grounds are the always grounds open. are always open and it's illuminated yeah. and it is just magical. Yeah. It's gorgeous. So serene, so beautiful and with the dead. lights. And well, it's not dead, dead no, but there's it's still people peaceful. walking around, but it's peaceful. Not as crowded. Yeah. All the shops, unfortunately, are uh, on Close. the main strip are closed. There are some on the opposite 
two streets that Which are is open. where our restaurant was. Mm -hmm. Are open. And it was such a great night to yeah. walk around. So definitely a recommendation that if you're not looking to go into the temple itself and not really looking to do the shops, um, or if you want a different experience at Sinjoji Temple, go, definitely go, go at day, nighttime. Yeah. Go both during the day and yeah. night. <laughs> definitely recommend it. Yeah. And that led us to dinner at Amaro, yeah. the Tempura restaurant. And again, wow. so glad that we picked this over the Ichiran Ramen. Um, very fresh food very local place with just two people making it like a, a, a husband and a wife combo the items were not greasy no. either taste or feel everything was fresh and our favorite item at least my favorite item yeah. was the fried egg we didn't realize what it is um we look at it, it's like okay we'll just see that? thought maybe it was tofu yeah or something like that but then once we went and put our chopsticks in it, it just fell apart with the oozy yolk oh it was a tempura egg yeah and really good it was so good <laughs> some of the best tempura i've had tempura here it, it's nothing like what i've had here nothing. yeah it's nothing like here in the states no and then we've had some on the side of our other meals and again this is the freshest that we had but it's their specialty yeah so it was really good so definitely a thumbs up and hope to make it back there. yeah it's definitely, definitely on our list to go back and then finally we ended our night at don quixote the large department store yeah. and i wish i would have shown a little yeah. bit of it but the problem with the don quixote's is is they are very overwhelming oh, very God. loud so loud like every things. little spot has music it has things making noises it yes. has things moving it it's like 10 stories of think dollar stores yeah basically but 10 floors of dollar store stuff like five below five below like stuff that. yes five below is a better uh but it is but it, a it really is good the, place yeah to, but it is a range of different things so not yes. only do they have things like five below that are cheap yeah. they do have like the luggage that we went for so for me to find the luggage department was really hard yeah and then to find the size that we wanted yeah. luckily i found the last one that we could get of the size that we wanted for the price um but that, but that is a great place to go for snacks, mm -hmm. for candy, for if you souvenirs. Need souvenirs. They have anim as animate spots. Shoes, shoes, clothing, clothing. Anything as a big emergency Girls, store. Definitely yes. worth it. M uh, people go for the makeup. Yeah. So definitely a cool mm -hmm. store. Um, worth a finding one. They're all over the place. They're all over. And that There's one's one of the larger ones. Yeah, we just <laughs> learned that Hawaii has yes. a few stores. So if we ever make to Hawaii, we'll have to check that yeah. out. <laughs> Um, but overall, Don Quixote is really cool, worth a stop into. Just know it is a sensory overload, so if you have a sensory Sensitive sensitivity to noises. to noises and flashing and all that, it is that. Yes. <laughs> but overall, I think we had a really good day despite in our first time, rain. despite the rain in Tokyo. I, after watching the video again, I didn't realize we did so much. Yeah. And uh, I'm what, glad we what did. What wasn't shown was in Ikebukuro, we stopped at Anime. Yeah. One of the largest anime stores in Japan. That was overwhelming too. That was just People like ten, store, 10 stories of just nothing but... Unfortunately, I'm old. It was more of the modern anime. So it, it didn't have any of the old stuff. And it was basically the same things for each anime. 10 floors of it. Yeah. So... so. Yeah. Hope you enjoyed this video of our first day in Tokyo. The next one up is our second full day in yeah. Tokyo where we explore a little bit more of the city mm -hmm. and see a few more of the items. Yep. And we end our night in that video at the Shibuya Crossing. Yes. So be sure to tune into that video. So until <laughs> next time, be, be safe, be kind, kind and adventure on. on. Bye. Bye. Thank you for watching our video. If you liked it, be sure to give it a thumbs up. If you've not subscribed to our channel yet, be sure to hit that subscribe button below. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the comments section below.